Good evening, my brothers and sisters. This evening, once again, we're going to draw near to certain moments in the life of Jesus. And the discovery that we're going to make this evening is that our Lord wants to engage you. He has something that he desires to ask of you. He has a task that he wants to entrust to each and every one of you. Now, so far we've seen that what our Lord is asking of us, why Jesus wants to engage us is because he wants to be set free from our churches. He wants to be able to walk our streets again. He wants to be able to touch people's lives, whether it be at work, at home, in our neighborhoods. And that the way that this is going to happen is by you and I becoming these joyful missionary disciples of Jesus by telling others about him. So let's draw near to a moment in the life of Jesus to see that this is in fact how it all happens. So once again, we're looking at the baptism of Jesus on the River Jordan, and we're going to listen to the testimony of St. John the Baptist. So we're in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verses 29 and following. The next day, he, that is John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. So John recognized who Jesus was. John had been prepared by our Father. He had been prepared by the Holy Spirit to be able to recognize Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, what does he do? He speaks, he proclaims, he tells others, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now by John, bearing witness, what happened? The lives of at least two people were changed forever. These two people are Andrew and John. Now, Andrew and John didn't know who Jesus was. They weren't able to recognize him. It was by John the Baptist bearing witness, telling others about Jesus, who he was, where he could be found, that the life of Andrew and John was changed. The course of history was changed because these two men, after hearing John's testimony, they themselves drew near to Jesus and became his disciples. So we understand why our Lord wants to engage us, why he wants to encounter us. It's not just about you and I becoming his disciples, but when, when Jesus looks at you, he sees all of those people in your life that he wants to touch through your life, through your words, through your actions. So that's something always important to keep in mind, that when our loving Savior is in relationship with us, when he looks at us, he just doesn't see us, but he sees those people in our lives and all of us have these people in our lives that, you know what? Just maybe the only way your neighbor is ever going to hear the good news of Jesus Christ is if you talk about the Lord to him. Maybe you have a coworker, maybe you have a boss, maybe somebody at the grocery store that you shop at. It just might be that the only way that person is ever going to encounter Jesus Christ is yes, by your example of a holy life lived, but also by your bearing witness to Jesus Christ by telling others joyfully about him. So what we're gonna do this evening is, yes, we're gonna draw near to other moments of the life of our Savior in the Bible, but we're going to address three objections that, you know, Father Michael, I understand what you're saying, but there's no way that you could actually be talking to me. These are three objections that commonly arise in our experience. One objection is that, well, Father, I'm too young. I'm just a kid. You know, 
adults are important people. I'm just a, a child. The second objection is, you know what? I'm just an ordinary person. I go to work, I do the same things every day. Who would listen to me? How could Jesus really want to engage me? My life is so simple and ordinary. The third objection is, Father, I'm too old. My life is very hidden. How could Jesus want to engage me? How could Jesus be asking something of me? So let us begin to answer these three objections, but let us note that there's one thing that these three objections have in common. Basically what you are saying is my life doesn't matter. And we know that's not true because Jesus Christ died on the cross for love of you. So because of what our Lord has done, what he has accomplished, we know that you in the eyes of God, whether you be young and a child, whether you live a simple and ordinary life, or whether you be elderly and live a hidden life, we know that when God our Father looks at you, he sees in you a precious son and a precious daughter of his. So the first objection, I'm too young. To answer this objection, we're gonna to get to know the life of an ordinary person just like you. And the name of this person is Agnes. Agnes is a 12 year old little girl. But let's listen to the experience of Agnes when she welcomed Jesus into her life, when she allowed Jesus to engage her, listen to the words of this 12-year-old girl. Listen to how she speaks about Jesus to others. This is what she says. Jesus is my only spouse. Jesus is more beautiful than the sun and the stars. Jesus has promised that he will be with me always. So this 12-year-old girl, because she allowed Jesus to engage her, because she welcomed Jesus into her life, she was able to bear witness to Jesus, not just to her family, to her friends, to her neighbors, but she was able to stand up boldly to the Roman emperor. She gave her witness. She bore testimony to Jesus. And because of her faith, because of her relationship with Jesus, she gave the supreme witness of shedding her blood for love of Jesus Christ. So all of my little brothers and sisters that are out there, Agnes is just one of many examples of children who opened their lives to Jesus, who allowed Jesus to engage them. And because they did that, they went on to do extraordinary things for the kingdom of God. Now we're gonna take a look at the second objection. And that is, Father, you know, my life is ordinary. I'm a simple person. I go to work and I do the same thing every day. Now, to answer this objection, we're gonna get to know somebody just like you, an ordinary person. And we're looking at the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter five. We're gonna to get to know the story of a man named Simon. Simon was a fisherman. He lived a very ordinary life. He did the same thing every day. He prepared his nets, he got in his boat, he spent the night out on the sea catching fish. And on this particular day in the life of Simon, he had been out all night, he had cast his nets, and he caught not a single fish. And he had come into shore, and he was cleaning his nets, and he was mending his nets. And it's precisely because Simon was faithful to his daily duties, that Simon was faithful to his ordinary life, that Jesus was able to draw near to him. 
And Simon, just like Agnes, welcomed Jesus into his life. He allowed Jesus to engage him, and Jesus entered the boat of Simon. And Simon allowed Jesus to teach others, to speak to others there in his place of work. And then Jesus asked Simon Peter to go out into the deep to cast his nets. At first, Peter hesitates. Lord, we've been out all night. We haven't caught a single fish. But at your word, I will cast out my nets. And because Simon allowed Jesus to engage him, Jesus was, Jesus was able to reveal his power. That miraculous catch of fish Simon Peter sees this, he falls on his knees and he says, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. And Jesus responds to Simon Peter, just as he responds to each and every one of you, that from now on, he is calling you, he is asking you to become a fisher of men by telling others about him, by bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, everywhere in your life, especially at work and in our homes. The third objection was that, you know, Father, I'm old. My life is hidden. Who would want to listen to me? How is it possible that our Savior wants to engage me? Now, to answer this objection, we're going to get to know the life of an old man and a very old woman. The old man, his name is Simeon and the woman, her name is Anna. Now, what happened when Simeon and Anna were open to the Holy Spirit, when they welcomed the Holy Spirit into their lives? They were called to enter into God's temple, into God's house. Simeon was given that wonderful grace of being able to hold Jesus in his hands and to offer him to God our Father. Simeon was then called upon to bear witness to Jesus, to bear witness to the Messiah within God's house. And Anna had this very same experience. Because she allowed the living God to engage her, she was able to encounter Jesus. And then she was called to bear witness to Jesus within our Father's house. So my older brothers and sisters, your life is so precious in the eyes of God our Father. He so desires to engage you, for you to welcome Jesus into your homes. And your witness, your testimony is so important, both for the life of the church, but also for your own family for your children, for your grandchildren, for your neighbors. So my older brothers and sisters, I thank you for having been faithful to Jesus all of these years. And I encourage you to bear witness to Jesus' faithfulness to you. Speak to others in our parish, in our parish churches. Speak to your children. Tell your grandchildren about Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, we've seen that Jesus really desires to engage you. He wants to break into your lives. And that when you and I welcome Jesus into our lives, whether you're a child, a young person, whether you live a simple and ordinary life, or whether you're old, when you and I allow Jesus to engage us, when we welcome him into our lives, we are able to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. We are able to change the course of history as the hearts and the lives of others are touched by our witness of Jesus Christ. Amen.